Ciao friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm Sophie and here's my dog wanting to play fetch. So I had actually seen this trend last year, two years ago, I don't know. And I never hopped on it. But now the more that I think about it, the more I wanted to do it. And I don't know, I thought it would be fun and I thought that maybe some of you would be interested in kind of seeing <laughs> all the jobs that I have done in my 30 years and to kind of also let you guys know that life isn't all about one one road um, and that it's okay if you change careers, it's okay if you change jobs, it's okay if you're in college and you don't know what you're wanting to do out of life. Trust me, what I'm doing now, 10 years ago when I was in college, I never would have known that I would have done that. So I'm here today to share with you the resume of a 30 uh, of an almost 30 year old i will be 30 in a couple of weeks i may already be 30 by the time this video is live i'm not sure <laughs> but i sat down the other day and, and thought about all of the odd jobs and actual real jobs that i've done since i was of age to start working and it was very interesting um, let me just show you, I don't know if you can see, but like this is the list. That's crazy, right? So I'm excited to go through all of them with you. So let, let's just get into it because it's, it's, gonna, it's a long list and it, this may be a long video. So if you're not interested in this kind of stuff, no worries, you can exit out. I'll see you in my next video. But if you are interested in seeing every job that I've had since I was probably around 12 years old, then stay tuned. Okay, so let's start from when I was like, I don't know, eight. And I, I wouldn't classify this as a real job, but this is just how I started to think about wanting to make money, my own money. And apart from chores, it was lemonade stands. I would get together with my step, my, with my younger stepbrother and we would make fresh lemonade. And by we, I mean my mom. <laughs> and we would set up a little stand. I remember I would write in like marker, on big poster board like how much we were selling our lemonade for and we would set it up on the corner of the street and that's kind of where the entrepreneurial spirit began was selling lemonade yes i'd love to know did any of you guys do that was that just like a, a thing in the 90s or do kids still do that now let me know Next, I was about 12. I know I was in middle school. I'm not sure exactly how old I was. I would say, I would think maybe around 12. I was a babysitter. Surprise, surprise. Um, basically, I just started babysitting our kids on our block and then kind of word of mouth. They would just call me and say, oh, I know that, you know, I heard from my friend that you babysit their, their, their kids. Are you free this weekend? And then I remember even making business cards. <laughs> <laughs> that just said my name, my email address, a picture of me, and my phone number. And by phone number, I mean like our landline at the time. And I didn't have a cell phone at 12, are you kidding? And that was like my first little mini business, I would say. It was like word of mouth and every weekend, either a Friday or Saturday night, starting in middle school, I would babysit. Literally that went on throughout college. So yeah, that was like my first like real gig. I thought I was so cool getting my $10 an hour in cash, you know, my own my own money to, that I could finally spend. My next job, I was in middle school as well. And this was kind of more like an off, it was like middle school and high school. And it was modeling. I did join an agency in middle school. I mean, like I didn't do like huge campaigns or anything. I would do little things. I mean, granted in Houston, there weren't many there weren't too many opportunities. Um, I would do like trunk shows and I did a couple of print things. I basically begged my mom because she didn't really want me to, to do it. And I begged her and I begged her and I was always, as a kid, posing in pictures and just, I was like an odd string bang. And I was approached in middle school, like scouted, I guess. Um, and my mom never was too keen on me to join that industry or to do that. So she would let me do it. She would drive me to castings. Um, and once I got my car in high school, like I drove myself to castings, but it never blew up because I had two, two different, 
to turn down a trip that my agency wanted me to go to to, to New York. And I was pretty bummed out about that. Um, but, you know, looking back, I know that my mom was doing what was best for me and like my mental health and mm, just life at that time. Um, so, but I do always wonder like, what if, you know, what if I did go to New York and what if I did go down that path? Um, and since then, like I still do rarely, but every now and then like certain like modeling things, I'm not a part of an agency or anything. Um, anymore when I was in Rome I was and I did a couple things but nothing huge but anyways that would be that was like my next kind of like teenage job I guess so so then my first like real real job where I had to like fill out like a w-2 and like get tax pay taxes on it and everything I, I was in high school and I believe I was a sophomore in high school so I think I was 15 and that was I was a hostess at a burger joint <laughs> Which is funny because if you know me, I'm a vegetarian and I've never had a hamburger in my entire life So working at a burger joint is interesting But but if you know if you're in the Houston area and I think they're also nationally now, I'm not sure but it was Papa's Burger and I mean, I still love to go there because they have really good non-meat food also um, And I, I was a hostess. So I, so I like basically manned the POS system So the way that this place works is you walk in you order and with the, the hostess and then you sit you take your your little ticket and then you go sit down so it wasn't really like seating people it was just taking people's orders i had to learn the pos system and that was like my first real job where you know i worked on weekdays while i while i was in high school i would have late nights and you know it's like you're not just manning the pos system but you're cleaning and you're making sure that the that you know you have to go to the bathroom and make sure that the toilet paper is is changed and all these little checklist things that you do when you work in a restaurant and i remember i remember loving it but i also it was difficult to to keep up with sports and studying and and that and i know i didn't have to work but i wanted to and a lot of my friends did too but that job was also great in the summer because in high school you don't you don't have school work in the I just think it's a great way to start kids working at it from a young age, like even if they don't need to. It's just a great way to instill work ethic and responsibilities. So kind of like a little part-time job that I did in high school. So maybe a lot of you actually don't even know because I don't think I've talked about this before, but I was in orchestra since like, like I was in orchestra. Well, I had pl I played the violin for about 12 years and most of those years I was in an orchestra. And a little part-time job that I did during high school was me and a couple of friends who were also in orchestra formed a quartet and we would play at people's functions. Like my mom, especially my mom's, like she hired us for her company parties and like word of mouth, we would go to other places too. And we got paid that way as well. So that was like a little like weekend holiday gig. Yes, I remember loving that and feeling so sophisticated and and mature you know oh, I'm, I'm i can't i have a gig this weekend with my violin and <laughs> i definitely miss playing the violin i haven't i haven't touched it since college and that's really sad so after i was a hostess at the burger joint then i went and i took my gap year i don't know if i talked about my gap year actually on my channel sorry i have something in my eye i did take a gap year after high school and when I came back from my gap year, I, it was the summer before college for me, my freshman year of college, but it was for, for my friends, it was their sophomore year of college. And I got a job at the sister restaurant from the burger joint right next door to the fine dining steakhouse, Papa's Steakhouse. And I got a job as a hostess. Now this was like a real hostess job. I had to dress in all black and like, you know, take people to their tables. And this was, this is a five-star restaurant. And it, I actually loved it. I was more in my element. It was funny cause yes, it's a steakhouse and I've never had steak in my entire life. And I remember like big time, like oil people, oil guy, oil cowboys would like walk in with their cowboy hats and be like, darling, what do you recommend? And I'm like, well, I actually don't eat meat, but I've heard that the filet mignon is really good. But I remember I would get like tips, like really good tips 
taking people's coats or I remember helping people from the cocktail bar to their their tables and like carrying their drinks for them and like people would just hand me like $20 bills just for seating them. So I remember it was like the first job that not only did I get paid like $12 an hour, which for me at that time was a lot for just being a hostess, we, there was a tip pool involved too. So all the tips that all of the servers made kind of went into one pool and we all shared that. And it being a fine dining restaurant, like I remember my paychecks were pretty big for, for the time. I loved that job so much. That was my summer time. That was my job that I did all summer. Uh, it was it was late nights since it was a steakhouse. They weren't open for lunch, so it was all the time it was night. So I had to be there from like five to midnight a lot. But it was worth it and I loved it. I met great people and yeah. But during college, I did want a job, but I also wanted a job that was flexible and that worked with my crazy school schedule so i remember my freshman year of college i don't even know how i got this job honestly i don't know if it was like a word of mouth or someone who knew somebody i don't remember at all but i just remember going for an interview to be a nanny uh, in a nice part of town i did go to cu university of colorado so this was in boulder and i got the job and i was so excited i mean i love kids and this was there was three kids there was um a boy who was in middle school i think and then the girl was in elementary school and then they had a baby girl she was like two or three she was like a toddler and basically it was like picking them up from school taking them to their lessons or whatever they had to do sports and then taking them sorry guys i just had like a cough attack and then bringing them home and fixing them a snack making sure that they do their homework you know nanny duties and then the parents would come home and then i would go then i would go back to my dorm so i did that for about a semester and I love kids you guys and I mean I babysat forever and like I, I genuinely love children but this was not for me um the parents were very demanding and the kids the, the, I remember the boy was chill he did his own thing he studied in his room he was great the girl both of the girls they were like just little terror children um yeah um, I remember one time the girl in elementary school who she like locked me out of the, she locked me out of the house thought it was a funny joke and prank and I couldn't get in Mom came home she was super upset she was like how can you not watch over my children like this you know there's a three-year-old in the house and I'm like I'm like I'm so sorry your 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 daughter locked me out of the house my cell phone was inside like how was I remember that being a nightmare and like she the little girl thought it was funny but I I'm pretty sure that she was being malicious on purpose and then I remember once um we were all doing homework together so like well so I had a lot of I mean I was in college so I had a, I had an exam the next day or something I remember bringing my index cards with me and while the kids were doing their homework and I gave the youngest her snack and like I think a coloring book or something and I was studying as well you know I don't know I thought that I could do that the mom came home and was like oh everyone's doing their homework great oh what are you doing and I'm like oh I'm just you know I have an exam tomorrow I'm studying with, while they do their homework and she goes you're paid to watch and play with my children not to study and I remember just being like oh my gosh like I don't know just the tone and I didn't think what I was doing was wrong anyways I remember quitting <laughs> that's I think yeah, I, I, def I remember quitting and just being like, you know what, it's not for me. The family is too demanding. And I remember she I remember she didn't even pay for my gas money. And now that I look back, I was not paid enough for that job. I had to use my own car, use my own gas money, taking their kids all over the, the, the city. Yeah, that was not right. Anyways, I'm glad I ended up I ended up quitting after one semester. So yes, the nanny job was not for me. Okay, my next job. <laughs> Oh, I've been I've debated whether or not I wanted to share this with the world, but um, and my mom actually didn't know about this until a couple weeks ago when I was looking when I was thinking of this list and I was like, by the way, mom, did I ever tell you that I did this in college? And she like she freaked out. 
some stuff is just better you don't share with your parents during that time and you look back at it and then you can laugh after the fact um and okay so this was this was like a very part-time i think i only did this job I, I think i only did it like twice um and that was a i was a sushi model and if you don't know what that is i'm not going to go into too much detail google it you're welcome yeah i mean it's not like my proudest moment but it was great i remember like it was like 300 dollars in cash a night and i remember walking into the sushi restaurant where i went to school and they had like sushi models wanted and i was like oh what's that like i do modeling on the side and they explained to me what it was and i was just like okay and they told me how much they pay in cash and and i just thought it was an amazing gig granted i didn't do it that that much um but i did it a couple times and i it would be fair to leave it out and but you know when you're in university you explore and you do things and i'm embarrassing i didn't think i was going to share that with many people okay next after the sushi model gigs i became a hostess at a new restaurant in boulder and it was new at the time um now it's all over the states now i think and that is the kitchen next door so in boulder if you guys have been or if you are from there the kitchen is a famous nice farm to table restaurant and they were opening up when i was going to school there they were opening up next door to the kitchen a place called next door and it was a similar like farm to table but more like pub bar bites kind of restaurant it was a part of the the launch crew i guess of the kitchen next door and now if you look it up it's like all over the states and amazing menu amazing concept i remember just it was i started in the summer i think and it was like my it was the job that i had in college like throughout the summer and throughout the semesters like i kept that job throughout the rest of my college life and i loved it i loved the people i work with i worked with and yeah i, I met some amazing friends that way and i just loved it i was a hostess you guys, I definitely contemplated being a server, but if you know me, you know that I'm like the biggest, one of the biggest klutzes in the world. And just even like picking up people's empty drinks and taking them to the kitchen, like I would slip and fall. And like my one time my dress, I slipped and fell and my dress came over my head, exposing my underwear and glasses broke. And that's just how I would be on a daily basis as a server. So for everyone's sake, I sticked to hostessing and I loved it. Um, yeah, but I loved that job and I quit when I, when I, when I graduated. So, so yeah, um, that was like my big, long extended college job. So then after I graduated college, um, I remember coming back to Houston and being like, okay, the job market in Houston is great. I'm going to live at home for a while, save money. I wasn't sure. So I majored in communications and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, to be honest. I was looking at like PR agencies or like marketing firms. And one of my, actually one, one of the girls, she became my friend, but I met her working at, as a hostess at Papa's Steakhouse, reached, she was a little older than me. And she reached out to me and said, you know, my company's hiring. I saw you just graduated college. You're back in Houston like we would love to have you come in for an interview and at that point you know you're like hungry and eager and you want to interview everywhere and and that's just kind of how the truth of the reality when you first graduate college and I remember going in for an interview and then offering me the position on the spot and I was so excited just because it was like a job offer and I wanted to start making money and I was living at home and I just wanted to start something so I accepted it and that was I was the administ I wasn't an what was I like a, an administrative assistant um, at a staffing company so obviously that wasn't like my ideal that's not what I went to school for but I just thought that there was great opportunity for growth in the company maybe the pathway to become uh, a recruiter so I did the staffing administrative assistant for maybe five six months until they were like, okay, like you've been, you're doing really great. You're getting a hang of the company. Like, do you, there's two pathways you can take. You can either become a, a recruiter with, or you can become an account executive. So the recruiter would have basically interviewed people and 
put them in fit them in job open job positions with clients or companies and the account executive would basically get the business for the company and at that point I think I wanted to go into sales and I I I don't know I, I honestly now it's crazy when you look back you're like why did I take that path but every path you take in life leads you to where you are today so anyways I ended up choosing the account executive role and that was a very tough job. It basically was cold calling. Um, all of our clients in Houston were like oil and gas companies and it was like getting new clients to use your services, your recruiting company services. So I remember my whole days were drive out driving around in industrial Houston, trying to get meetings with the HR department to have them use our staffing services and that was very tough. Um, it was, I was by myself all day in the car, um, cold calling and I didn't like it. I did that for about four months maybe. And then I don't even remember how this job came, came to fruition. I think I liked sales, but I didn't want to do sales in an industry I wasn't passionate about. So then I interviewed at an alcohol distribution company to be a sales rep. And I really wanted that job. I remember wanting that job because I wanted to get my foot in the door into the wine side of things. But the position that I was interviewing for was, was liquor. Um, so I interviewed and I got the job. I had to leave my account executive job, which was hard because the people there were very kind and sweet and like very amazing people. But I just told them it wasn't what I was passionate in and I was passionate in alcohol. <laughs> it was more my jam and my style and like, you know, events and being more creative with, with the sales position. So I started that job and I loved it and it was tough. It was also like, it wasn't um, as much as cold calling because they gave you a client list and I had a set territory that I had to stay in but it was you know tracking down those bar managers tracking down the restaurant managers and trying to um i was on premise so meaning all of my accounts were restaurants and bars and it was tough because a lot of sales reps come and go and so these bar or restaurant managers are like okay here's another sales rep um what do you have for me and every month these your your suppliers give you monthly goals so you know for example oh this month we need like you to sell 10 bottles in different accounts of this type of tequila um, or, or of our new tequila or ever or new vodka and it was it was fun it really was but there was just something missing from my life I don't know I just felt like for me I needed a little more structure and that was a lot more you're on your own. Um, you are on your own. You don't. We didn't have an office to go into. Um, now that I look back on it, now I would have loved that job now. But then I needed more structure, and I needed more of like I wanted a nine to five office job. I wanted a team that I saw and worked with every day. This job I was on my own, driving in my car. You know, meeting with people every day, and it just. I don't think it was for me at the time. I wanted a, a move into like a city, a walkable city. I was over Houston, I was done. And so I remember applying to so many jobs in New York City, Boston. I even applied in Portland, Maine, uh, on the East Coast. I applied to so many jobs. I don't even remember. PR, um, a, a lot of PR, a lot of account executives like for beauty companies in the in the northeast there are a lot of travel companies and at that time i wanted to do so much more traveling and i was just like take me anywhere now like i have nothing holding me down i have nothing holding me holding me back i will move anywhere and everywhere for anything so i remember um applying to this job it was a sales position for a travel company and i remember seeing their like work with us video and I was like, I have to work at this company. I mean, it was so vivacious and engaging and, and the type of people that seemed to work at this company were, were like me. And it just looked, seemed like a very fun travel company to work for. So that's uh, located in Boston, Massachusetts. I remember doing a phone interview and then I 
didn't even do a Skype interview because my phone interview went so well that they wanted to hire me on the spot. And I remember being like, I've never been to Boston, A, in my entire life. B, like they wanted me to start in two weeks, I think. I was like, B, I need to find a place. Like I, I've never been to Boston. I don't, where do I even begin to look for apartments? Like I remember they were like, okay, great. Like, can you start in two weeks? And I, I wanted that job so bad that I accepted and I had to quit my current job move, pack up my stuff, and find an apartment in the span of two weeks. Wow, now that I look back at that, I'm just like, I can conquer anything. Um, I remember just finding something on Craigslist that was like month to month until I could find where I wanted to be once I was in Boston. Granted, I had never ever been to that city in my entire life, but I knew, I just like followed my gut and I just knew that that was the right move for me even having even not having ever been to that city i just felt in my gut and in my in my bones that that was the job for me um, and that i had to make the move i made the move so that was um, i was a tour consultant it was it's basically like an account executive for a travel company and you try to get people to sign and book the tours for that company um, and the great perks to that company is that every year they would send you on one of their tours and my first tour that I went on, that's where I met my now husband. And we did long distance, for, he lived in Italy. <laughs> He's Italian. Um, and I came back, we did long distance, me and my now husband did long distance for about a year. And I think I was burning out. So sales reps, you have to have a lot of drive, a lot of motivation. All modesty aside, I was really good at it. I made, I think, top three salesperson my second year, I think. Um, anyways, yes. So, I mean, I loved it. I really did. And I made some of my now best friends I made at this job. I met my now husband and it just, it brought me so much joy, happiness. But I was A, burned out because being on the phone and, and every month not knowing if you were going to hit your numbers and get paid is one of the most stressful things in the world. Like that's why sales is really, I don't know if I can ever see myself going back into sales. I need more stability in my life. Um, so getting burned out and having my boy, my then boyfriend live across the country and him not being able to move to the US was hard. So I think I kind of was like, okay, I've always wanted to live in Italy. I mean, that's been a dream of mine. I'm burned out. I love my job, but I'm burned out. <laughs> Let me just move to Italy. And I wanted so bad to work, to keep that job, but work in, in Italy with that job. It just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. That company had an, has an office in Rome, but no positions for me. So it was really sad to leave that company because I loved it so much. Um, but I just was ready for the next step in life and that was to move to Italy with literally no plan and move with my boyfriend. I have an entire video, that was like one of my first videos on YouTube by the way, and I have an entire video on that and if you guys wanna see it, I'll link it up here. I don't remember where it goes, but yes. Um, so I moved to Italy with no plan, um, literally no plan. Italy, especially Rome, I've talked about it on my channel, but the economy there is not the best. It's very hard to find a job for Italians. So imagine for an American. I didn't have my citizenship at, at the time. So I basically the only thing that I could do was, the only thing that, so the first thing that I did do when I got there was um, I, I tutored English privately just for some extra cash. And then that kind of turned into Okay, well, I like kids. I applied to be an English teacher at a private language school. So I did, and I worked at an English school for kids. And it was, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't my passion. Um, let's just say that. Like, I love kids, and it was a really fun environment, but it was almost like a toxic administrative environment. Um, they didn't, they, they were very demanding. They paid like less than minimum wage basically in the US standards. And I worked 
Monday through Saturday, just way too much basically. And I'm all about like, you know, working after hours and off the clock, but it was just grueling. And that's around the same time that I started my YouTube channel and my YouTube did kick off. Um, I didn't even expect it. I started my YouTube channel as like a hobby, as a way to communicate and to share what I'm doing with family and friends back in the States. And my YouTube really did well. And then I kind of started taking it more seriously and started doing a lot more Instagram. And then emails would come in, partnerships, sponsorships. And I was just like, this can be a job. Like you can make money doing this, what? And so I then went from I, I think I taught at that school a year. I think, yeah, a year. And then I was like, well, I'm making better money doing YouTube and like Instagram stuff. And I get to travel and I just, why, what, why would I not do that? So I quit the, the, the English school and I decided to do YouTube in full time, which was great, loved it. Um, but then every month's different. Um, you, it's hard because you know it's not like a set salary. Every month was different. And some months were really great, some months were really tough. So what I decided to do on the side was, I, I still taught um, private lessons. Um, I also started teaching English online to Chinese kids. So I, if you guys have followed, been following me for a while, you know that I worked first with Dada ABC and then with Q Kids. I loved Q Kids, Dada ABC. Eh, I didn't really, I wasn't very happy with them. So then I started working for Q Kids and you can set your own schedule and it was great. Pay was good, kids were cute. Um, so yeah, I kind of did a mix between YouTube, um, private lessons, teaching English online. And then I started getting reached out to by people in Rome who liked my content. And they asked me to, if I did, you know, freelance or contract work on the side. And I was just like, I never thought about it. Why not? So then I started working contract based with these startup Italian companies. Kind of had many little like streams of income coming in at once and I was busy doing different things every day and it wasn't the same and yeah I kind of did that for a couple years and loved it but then it was like okay what's the next like do we stay in Italy the problem so this is the thing YouTube is like this and you it's not the same every month and you, I couldn't rely on just YouTube and the startup companies that I would work for that I got contracted for either didn't pay me for my work and my services um, or were just very difficult to work with. And I was getting, let's, here's the word again, burned out by putting all my time and effort into working contract but not getting paid. So anyways, that was a big thing. And I was kind of like over at that time and Emilio and I, my now husband, talked so much about after getting married, what's the next step? Um, he was getting burned out of his current job. And so we were like, okay, well, let's go, let's come to the States. So left all that behind. For me, it was actually pretty easy to leave like my contract work just because they never paid me. And if they did, they, they finally, one of them finally paid me a year later. What the things that I have learned in my 30 years, like, I mean like the older you get, you know what you're worth and like, don't let people, take advantage of you basically. And I was getting taken advantage of in, it, in Italy 100% and I was over it and I was ready for more structure and I was ready for a nine to five and I was ready for to work with a team and to grow within one company that I just couldn't, I, I applied for so many company jobs in, in Rome, even in Milan, I just, I wasn't, I would, didn't even get like interviews. So came back to the US, no job, um, I. I applied for my now job via LinkedIn. I think I got the interview within one month of coming back to the States, which is like, I'm very, like I was just so grateful. And I ended up getting the job and I've been working for that company 
since October. So now I'm a social media manager at a beauty company and I love it. And I didn't like, it's definitely a dream job for me. And it's just crazy looking back at all of these jobs as minuscule or as big as they were led me to where I am now. So yeah, if I had never moved to Italy, I would have never started a YouTube channel and have never really like launched my social media presence the way I did and become passionate and understand it. And I would never be sitting in this chair talking to you right now about all my previous jobs. And it's just crazy how literally everything you do, every decision you make in your life leads you to where you are today. It's crazy. So yeah. This is a very long video. It's a lot longer than I had anticipated. So if you're still tuning in and you're still watching, thank you. I'm so glad that my resume interests you so. But yeah, I just thought that this would be interesting and fun and to share with you guys literally everything that I have been through in terms of all the odd little jobs that I've done in my life. Videos like this are very important because a lot of people like even you graduate college and you don't know what you do that's okay because see how many times I've changed careers and I've changed jobs just out of college and I'm, I'm 30 you know like it's okay I didn't know what I wanted to do in life last year so it's okay <laughs> just take my experience as an example you are on the right path and you will make the decisions that will bring you to where you are meant to be. Yeah. So I liked, I thought that this video was fun. It was like a trip down memory lane. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I would love to hear if any of you had similar experiences or had similar jobs as I did growing up. I hope you guys are all well and safe and good. And, and if you like these types of videos, like what else could I do that's similar? Like, do you like story times? Because I feel like I have so many story times. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I put out all different types of content these days. <laughs> but anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. And I will hopefully see you guys in my next video. Bye.